Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick uh, solution to baking tapes. Uh, these are tapes from a three-quarter inch, uh, from the three-quarter inch era in the 1970s. Video, they were professional tapes that were used in studios and whatnot. And they get what's called sticky shed syndrome, where the tape, especially this brand, Ampex, uh, the binder gets sticky on the tape. And um, let me see if I can open it just to show you. So the, the, the formula that Ampex used in the 1970s that bound the magnetic to the plastic of the tape, um, when it gets old and it gets uh, too humid, the, the, uh, the binder gets sticky, and I, I, we're in a library right now with some 20,000 tapes here uh, of all different brands, but this Ampex brands from the 70s consistently are, are horrendous. Now, you know it has sticky shed syndrome when you put it into a three-quarter inch player, turn it on, and it squeaks, and then it will eventually stop. It won't play. Uh, the capstan pinch roller that holds the tensioner starts to squeal terribly and then jiggle and then it and then eventually the tape stops. So the solution for this is to do what's called baking the tape. Now this is sort of a rudimentary way to do it but it, it works. I took a regular space heater here, a, you know, a $150 space heater um, that heats up, has a digital thermometer on it and I put one of the metal backings from one of these tape players, you know, or these the, the, the tops to it on here just so it will conduct the heat. It's balancing up on top of the heater here and it's got a flat surface and you simply take the tape, lay it down here. I have this one, this particular heater, uh, I don't even know what brand it is, um, I have it set to 78 degrees. The, the metal is much hotter than 78 degrees but it seems to be, that seems to be the optimal temperature for doing this. Take the tape, just almost like a piece of meat in the oven, you, you put it on here. Now these tapes, the, the, um, the 20 minute tapes, Ampex tapes, I let them bake on one side for about an hour and a half to two hours, and an hour and a half to two hours on the second side, and then um, let it cool down for about an hour and then play it. If it doesn't play and it's very excessively, uh, has excessive sticky shed, then you may have to actually leave it overnight. Uh, you got to monitor it obviously or have it in a safe place and make sure you've got your, your heater circuit protected and all that but but the tapes are very uh, they're not going to melt they're very they're somewhat not heat resistant but they're heat tolerant so they don't melt or warp or anything with this much heat on them but um, uh, depending on how much sticky shed is on them is how long you leave them these uh, non ampex tapes that have a little bit of sticky shed <coughs> those you just have to do for a couple of hours on each side, let them cool down for 20 minutes, and then put them in your tape player and try them. Now, one thing to remember is if you put the tape in your player and it squeaks for any amount of time, take the tape out and make sure you clean the cap stand, all of them, uh, all the way around, especially the one with the tensioner on the, on the Sony machines, because that's the first point of contact where it hits and it makes a, it makes a you know, almost 180 degree turn before it gets onto the um, the tape head. So you got to make sure you clean that up because once the stickiness gets on there, it stays on there for subsequent tapes and it's very difficult to get off. Eventually it'll come off if you play it, but it's a lot easier to stop the tape player, open it up, and clean the cap stand, you know, clean of that gunk, and then rebake your tape and try it again. So that's just a quick, um, quick idea on how to fix sticky shed syndrome on Ampex three-quarter inch videotapes from the 70s and 80s.